Amen, amen. What a wonderful message uh, tonight. A wonderful message and song by Sapan Guru. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to see your faces here. I can see it here on my screen. Uh, lots of us are here tonight. Sapan so Guru, him and his family, dwell. Amalaya, Apple, Singuri Group, Apple Joy, True Joy, <laughs> Two Joys, a lot of joys. Irish, Israel, family, body and family, Pancake, uh, Seriwi Mon. Okay, two accounts for him and his family, Christy and the rest. That's a wonderful night tonight. Okay, so. That's it. We're going to focus our message tonight. Let me pin my video so in case something comes, my face will be there as the speaker tonight. And so let me share to you our screen study here. Okay. This is now about a man for all time. And I hope you can see it on your screen. We will try to make this as easy as possible for the lower level of students. And it will be like a multi-grade again tonight. It's a challenge on my part to make this easy for all of us. So how this will be easy, I believe it is the Holy Spirit who will speak to us in our heart, how this can be easy for, can be easy for all. All right. Uh, I don't see my face here on our screen. Uh, maybe, anyhow, I don't know why. <clears throat> But you can see it on your screen, right? Okay. Now, for tonight's topic is about God still moves stones. Can you imagine, have you seen a stone moving? Can you move stones? Imagine that. Now, this is in a context of God's word. Now we will see tonight what it means by God still moves stones. I believe it is something in this context that we need to understand why the stones move. Okay? Look, as you can see on your screen, God still moves stones. You might be thinking in what way? It is in the context of the resurrection after Jesus was dead and he was there staying inside the tomb on the third day. On the third day, it was his resurrection. It was the resurrection story that speaks of a God of the unexpected. Can you imagine 
the empty tomb of God speaks of an unexpected blessing. Let me thank God tonight for unexpected blessings also that came to our family. God knows how he extends his blessings to his people and he extends to our family too. And he extends to all of us and to anybody who needs blessings. It's a wonderful thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. And we understand that the empty tomb of God also speaks of a God of impossible possibilities. Is there anything impossible to God? His power can move into our lives and move stones. Those stones in our life, which are very hard to move, God can move them. Amen? The empty tomb speaks of the God of also new beginnings. Each one of us starts with a new beginning. Now, it was a, just a common, ordinary day. The sun rose. The birds sang. The flowers bloomed. Roosters crowed. Donkeys he hot. People awakened. They drank their Roma coffee. <laughs> ate their biscuits and broiled fish. They stretched, yawned, and stirred. There were no biscuits at that time. That biscuit is a modern term today. A British kind of word. It can be like chips this time. American English. Now, as the sun rose that morning, the day two Marys quickly hastened toward the place of his burial to perform a common task. It is in hope which leads the women up the mountain to the tomb that Sunday morning. It is duty, naked devotion. They expect nothing in the trunk. Now, what could Jesus give? What could a dead man offer? The last time they saw Jesus' body, it was broken, bruised, battered, and bloodied. There was no impulse, no heartbeat. His lifeless body was cold and still. The two women are not climbing the mountain to receive. They are going to the tomb to give. Now we can see here in John 20, verse 1, which tells us, On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that a stone had been taken away from the tomb. It was dark that Sunday morning. Dark with Peter's denial. Dark with the disciples' fear. Dark with Pilate's cowardice. Dark with Christ's anguish. Dark with Satan's glee, dark with Judas' betrayal, dark with the Jews' rejection. It was that Sunday morning. Although it was dark that Sunday morning, the women were doing their duty. The two Marys knew a task had to be done. Jesus' body had to be prepared for burial. Peter didn't offer to do it. Andrew didn't volunteer. John didn't step forward. Cleanse lepers, healed sufferers, forgiven sinners didn't offer their support. Mary and Mary decided to do it. There were two Marys, remember? They were doing their duty. More than duty, this is service motivated by love, desiring nothing in return. No selfish motive prompts them. 
They are not giving to get. They are giving to give. Friends, brothers and sisters, there are times when we too are expected to love. Expecting nothing in return. There are times we too are called to give to people who will never say thanks. There are times we are called to forgive when people won't forgive us. Kindness for the kindness sake. Service for service sake. There are times we are called to come early and stay late when no one else notices. If your motivation in doing is to receive thanks, when they don't say thanks, will you stop doing? There are times when we do a task simply because it needs to be done. God was watching. God noticed. He saw their tears. He knew their commitment. He honored their faithful service. And the God of the unexpected was about ready to do something. Amazing. As the two Marys approached the tomb, they were amazed. It says in Matthew 28, 1, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And the next verse says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, but an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. I want you to imagine a church board meeting <laughs> in the upper room that Saturday night before, right? Mary speaks, we are going to anoint the body. Peter speaks, anoint the body. It is dangerous. Roman soldiers, tensions high. Thomas speaks, anoint the body. It is impossible. Matthew speaks, 100 Roman soldiers and the stone weighs 787 pounds. It would take 10 men to move it. The two Marys don't have all the amateurs, but in faith, they move ahead. Do you think Mary was expecting an earthquake or the stone to be rolled away? God is a God of unexpected blessings. Now, God sent ravens to feed Elijah when he was hiding in the wilderness. Can you imagine that? He provided water from rocks and manna from heaven for the Israelites. What else? He turned water into pure, succulent, and fermented grape juice. He's the God of unexpected surprises and unexpected blessing. He's the God in your life, friends. What a wonderful God he is. You know this story about a fish, which is a coin to pay taxes. Again, it is unexpected. God can work unexpected miracles for those who trust him. Those who, in spite of disappointment, go about their duty doing what they know to be right. Let me bring you to an old scene. In 1948, there was a very deep man of God. In those days in communism, it was not possible for Christians to print books or Bibles. But a man 
We'll call him Pastor Pietro, had a typewriter. He took the typewriter and he would type passages from the Bible, entire books. One night, a security guard informant who lived in the apartment above him heard him typing. He heard the tap, tap, tap of the typewriter and called the police. And they came, the security force forces kicked in the door and said, this is against the law, you're under arrest. They took him off to jail where there was a very large rotund captain from the communist forces who looked at Pastor Pietro, a very small, very thin man and said, I have a question. Do you pray before you eat? <laughs> right? You know what happened? Oh, yes, I pray before I eat. I thank God. Well, that's not doing a very good job with you. God is doing a pretty bad job with you. And I'll tell you why. Because you are very, very skinny. And if God was doing a better job with you, he would feed you better. Now, I tell you what we're going to do. For the next five days, I'm going to put you in prison. And I'm not going to give you anything to eat. And I'm going to give you only a cup of water a day. And we'll see at the end of five days whether the communist state feeds me better than God feeds you. <laughs> what a challenge for Pastor Pietro. Pastor Pietro was thrown into prison. And while he was in prison, all that day, of course, he had no food. It became a night. He knelt down on his knees and he said, Dear God, you can move stones. Dear God, you can give me an unexpected blessing. So, dear God, some way that I don't understand, please feed me. That he began to listen, he heard, meow, 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 and he saw a cat. The cat outside the cell began to look at him. He ran into the cell, dropped a piece of bread, and then he ran out of the cell. Pastor Pietro said, this is enough to feed me. He ate that whole long slender mini loaf of bread. He was nourished just like the manna in the wilderness. The next day, Pastor Pietro didn't have anything to eat all day. He was praying. As he was praying, he heard meow, meow. And what do you think it was? The cat was coming again. The cat came again, slipped under the prison bars, this time also with a long piece of bread in his mouth, dropped it at the pastor's feet, and the cat ran off. Pastor Pietro broke of the piece that was in the cat's mouth, then ate the long slender bread. For four straight days, as Pastor Pietro prayed, he prayed, Lord, you can move stones. You can move stones. Lord, you can work miracles. You're the God of unexpected blessings. The cat came every day, dropped a long slender piece of bread at his feet, and Pastor Pietro, each day, ate the bread and felt nourished. The fifth day, the communist captain came back patting at his stomach and said, well, <laughs> I've been eating good the last five days. How have you been doing, preacher? You look as skinny as ever. Pastor Pietro looked up and said, to tell you the truth, I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing great. I was fed every single day. The communist captain said, you were fed every day? I'm going to put the person who fed you in prison. I'm going to persecute them. I'm going to torture them. 
Pastor Pietro smiled and said, Sir, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this, but a cat has been feeding me. The communist captain looked and said, What? And then he heard, Meow, meow. The cat began to come with another loaf of bread. The captain looked and he said, that is my cat and that is my bread. <laughs> Look, God still works miracles, doesn't he? If God wants to feed a Christian preacher in prison with bread off the captain's table, he can work an unexpected blessing. What do you say, brothers and sisters? I want you to, to draw your mind back to Jesus' situation at the tomb. Now, why did the angels move the stone? Not so Jesus could get out, but so Mary could look in. Jesus is not saying before his resurrection, please, I am in here. Someone let me out. Jesus could have walked out. Christ longs to show his unexpected miracles. Second point. The resurrection story speaks of the God of the impossible. Can you think of anything more impossible than the resurrection of Jesus Christ? He had no pulse, no heartbeat. He was broken, bruised, and blooded. Now, but Matthew 28, 6 tells us he is not here. For he is risen, as he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Indeed, Christ was dead. The Roman soldiers made sure of that. The tomb was sealed. Roman soldiers made sure of that. The disciples were so frightened, they didn't want to go near the place. The tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers just in case. Just in case. And then Matthew 17, 20 says, So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Why is it that we don't see more miracles today? Huh? The answer is because of and believe right but matthew 19 26 says he is the god of impossibilities right because matthew 19 26 says that jesus looked at them said to them with men this is impossible but with god all things are Possible. God is the God of impossibility. He turns the impossible into possible. He can walk on water. Jesus walks on water. God can calm the storm. And Jesus calms the storm and can calm any storm in your life. What are the storms in your life? A lot of storms in our life. I talked about it several times ago. Now, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two small fishes and multiplied them enough to feed thousands with food left over. Can you imagine that? In another instance, Jesus left Lazarus from the dead. I mean, he called Lazarus from the dead and Lazarus came forth. God is a God of impossibilities. 
God rolls away the stones. God is the God of impossible possibilities because he is alive. And the third point is God is also the God who turns dead endings into new beginnings. Now, there are no dead ends with God. If you see any dead ends in your life, they are not with God. Only mazes which lead to treasures at the end. Only pathways which lead to new opportunities. For so many people, it seemed like that Friday was the end. That dark, dark Friday. But it wasn't. We know in Matthew 28, 6, he is not here. Who is the reason? And he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. The tomb became a tunnel. And Friday, with all its darkness and tears, gave way to Sunday. That glorious Sunday morning. Oh, that glorious Sunday morning, Jesus came forth and said, this is not a day of endings, but of new beginning. Friends, it was new beginnings for Peter who had denied Christ. New beginnings for Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector. New beginnings for Thomas. Thomas was a doubter, but he saw the resurrected Jesus. New beginnings for Mary. New beginnings for all believers. The resurrected Christ brings new beginnings to everyone who sees him, everyone who touches your life. And mine. New beginnings for you and me, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Christ is risen. Today and especially tonight. Now let the risen Christ turn your common, ordinary day into unexpected blessing. Today. Let God move your stones. Let him turn your impossibilities into possibilities. Today, let God turn your tombs to tunnel, your ending to beginning. And may God bless us tonight as we truly understand that God can truly make a miracle in our lives. May God bless us tonight. For our prayer request uh, we have here, I can read it on my screen. May I request everyone to have a minute, 60 seconds of silent prayer with me. We have here prayer requests of Lister. Pray for his brother's positive result of neuro exam or job application. Pray also for uh, pancake friend to pass the test. Pray from Singuri Group. Pray for Aliza Alvarado, 14 year old. She's in ICU at Valencia Sanitarium. Pray for Laverne Arzadon to get negative results uh, from COVID test. Pray for Ella Rose Christine Ricarti, fast recovery from uh, removing her tumor in her left ovary. And also for Mam Evangeline Omoy, who got an accident. I hope she's awake already. Now, what we need to ask God is, first, we need to humble ourselves, confess our sins to God, 
ask for forgiveness, and then we promise God in faith that we will repent. Let us pray. Oh dear Yahweh God, you exist all the time. You're our creator, you're our sustainer. You're our provider, and you're the finisher of our faith. Also you are our heavenly father and we are your children. We humbly come to you. You're also our savior and so you're giving us the confidence to come to you to be clothed with your righteousness. We adore you for such a God of impossible possibilities, a God of miracles, because the world would be nothing without you maintaining it. All of us would have been dead at this time without your power maintaining the whole universe, even the sun shining us every day. We would not have any food, no matter how we work, without the sun. Without giving us the raw material, we wouldn't be able to survive. Therefore, everything comes from you, including our life that you breathe through your spirit. We adore you, God, for that. When we look at you, adoring you, O oh God, of your holiness, we look at ourselves as little beings full of weaknesses. So we would like to confess our sins, our shortcomings, our mistakes, our errors, and even sins of commission and omission, both intentional and unintentional, oh God, please forgive us for our sins. And we thank you also for this wonderful opportunity tonight, gathering all of us to worship you, to have fellowship spiritually, and to bring these concerns to your throne of grace. First, I pray for Lister's brother that he will have a positive result in his neuro exam, which is needed for his application, job application. I believe you have a plan for his life to be used mightily for your glory. According to his faith, according to your purposes, that prayer will be answered. I also pray for Sir Raymond's friend to pass test. We also pray for Aliza Alvarado. She is who is in ICU right now in Valencia Sanitarium. May you heal her, oh God. The same with Laverne Arzadon that she will have a negative COVID test result. A lot in the Philippines, oh God, contracted with COVID-19. Even this time, it's not going down. The cases are going up and they're still having lockdown in several degrees. I see how they are suffering this time, oh God. You already indicated that if we humble ourselves and seek your faith and serve our evil ways, then you will heal our land. You will heal us from diseases, oh God. We are making an intercessory prayer, all of us. They are doing silently while I am leading the prayer. Oh dear God, may you heal those contracted with the disease. I can see some of my friends, they are, they, some of them are dead already, even on my birthday. What? When I was celebrating that day, one of my friends just dead at 2 a.m. The family, oh Lord, is right now still bereaving. Not only that, there's only an example. I pray also for Elirose Christian's uh, Ricardis past recovery from uh, removal of tumor in her ovary. Oh God, same with uh, 
Ma'am Evangeline Cuomo, I hope she will be able to wake up from a coma. My auntie, oh God, uh, she was brought, she was taken to the hospital last night by my cousin, suffering from high blood sugar, diabetes, and, uh, enlargement of heart, and uh, she is having a hard time to breathe, and I hope she will be okay soon. Oh Lord, whoever is sick this time, especially believing you that you are their savior and you're their God. May you heal them according to their faith. And those who have not awakened yet from their faith, yet they are sick, Lord. We pray that you find ways that your spirit will knock at the door of their heart to awaken them. And that if possible, all of us will be ready for your coming. All of us tonight, oh God, we have different faith, different levels of uh, deg and degrees of our challenges. Oh Lord, we come and bring all these things to you. You indicated many times that our prayers sometimes are enough. But in several times, uh, prayer and fasting. But in other times, oh Lord, prayer, fasting, and, and then we also have to work because you said we keep on asking, we keep on seeking we keep on knocking at the door of your heart by faith and it is a cooperation between human and divine on things that we cannot control it is your god your power will be the one to take over the things we are not in control we have keep safe all our family members here especially kneeling with us tonight and praying with us right now and even those who are not with us tonight oh god that you continually touch their heart that we be together we are in the same group we are together in preparing for your coming we cannot leave anybody behind no one should be left behind oh god whatever concerns that we have may it be that you address all of them you have been addressing already some and uh, we are so grateful for your blessing we have you are this coming evangelistic meeting in uh, November. I pray that all of the caregivers and all of us uh, will help to extend our love to people who are in need of salvation. This is our way. It might not be easy for us because we are human beings. We are limited in our understanding and our capacity to approach people and our capacity to extend. But then that love which is in us compels us to do what you want us to do. That privilege of salvation, O oh Lord, compels us to do because out of our faith, it will be shown in our action. That being compelled by leaders or people, nobody can compel us. Only you, O oh God, out of our faith to you and our love to you. May you answer all these prayers tonight, including giving us a good night rest. And for forgiving our sins, O oh God, all we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.